Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken again. We're back in Chapter 6, learning all about polygons and quadrilaterals. This time we're going to take a look at one type of quadrilateral, the parallelogram. And we're going to be looking at what makes a parallelogram a parallelogram. We'll start with a warm-up, and what I'd like you to do is pause the video now so that you can work on these. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. Okay, hopefully you noticed that the 29x degrees and the 61x degrees are going to allow us to solve for x by making those two uh, I'm sorry, supplementary. So those are same side interior angles, which means when we add them together, we end up getting 180 degrees. So that allows us to solve for x. And when we do, we get x is equal to 2. For angle, I'm sorry, for y, variable y, we have to notice that these are alternate interior angles, so they are going to be congruent. We set them equal to each other, solve for y, and we get y is equal to 4. In question number 3, we see that we have a right triangle, which means we already know 90 degrees of the 180 degrees has been taken up. So the other two angles, the acute angles in the right triangle, are complementary, meaning they add up to 90 degrees, so we do 90 minus 72, giving us 18. Objectives for this section are prove and apply properties of parallelograms and use properties of parallelograms to solve problems. We're going to be a little bit light on the proofs, and what we're going to be doing specifically is using the problem-solving methods here based on the relationships or the conditions of being a parallelogram. Vocab is just parallelogram. And a parallelogram is a polygon with four sides that have, let's see, two pairs of parallel sides. So we need to have two pairs of parallel sides to define it as a parallelogram. However, there are a lot of conditions by which we can say it's a parallelogram, even if we don't know that we have two pair of parallel sides. And just pay attention to the notation. When we have a parallelogram, we can write the symbol, which looks like a tiny little parallelogram, and then the four points or vertices that make up the parallelogram, such as parallelogram A, B, C, D. Notice that in the diagram we have two sets of parallel sides. A, B, segment A, B is parallel to segment C, D. Segment B, C on the top is parallel to segment D, A on the bottom. Now we have a theorem 6-2-1 that says if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So this is saying that AB is congruent to CD and BC, segment BC, is congruent to segment AD. So that's one of the conditions uh, or properties of a parallelogram. We have a few more. We have opposite angles being congruent. So in 6-2-2, you see angles A and C are congruent, the red ones, and then we have angles B and D are congruent. Those are the blue ones. We also have a condition in 6-2-3 that says that consecutive angles or angles that are next to each other in the parallelogram are going to be supplementary, meaning they add up to 180. So we can add A and B and get 180. We can add angles B and C and get 180. We can get add angles C and D and get 180. We can add angles D and A, but they all have to be consecutive, meaning one right after the other. In 6-2-4, we look inside the parallelogram, and it says if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other. What that's saying is the red diagonal and the blue diagonal cut each other in half. So each one of the segments B, Z, is half of BD, or it's congruent to segment DZ. B, segment BZ is congruent to segment DZ, and segment AZ is congruent to segment CZ. Okay, using these different relationships, we are going to determine what the length of CF is. So the first thing that I'm always going to recommend that you do is label your diagram. We know that segment DE is 74 millimeters long and segment DG is 31 millimeters long. We also know that angle FCD in that lower left hand corner is 42 degrees. We want to find what the length of CF is. Well, 
We were told that this is a parallelogram, so we know that opposite sides are congruent. That means that se segment CF is congruent to segment DE. We know segment DE is 74, so we can substitute in and say side CF or segment CF is 74, uh, 74 millimeters long. The next thing that we want to do with the same parallelogram is find angle E, F, C. So we remember in the properties that we were just reading about that consecutive angles are supplementary. So that means they add up to 180. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the angle that we have, F, C, D, and the angle that we want, E, F, C, are going to add up to 180. Show the substitution for the one that we do have and then solve by subtracting using the subtraction property of equality to get the missing angle and we find that that's 138 degrees. Next we want to find seg the length of segment DF. We know that DF is one of these diagonals that we've been talking about and D segment DG is going to be congruent to segment FG. So to find segment DF, because we have two congruent segments, we can double segment the length of segment DG and that will allow us to say that segment DF is twice as long or 62 millimeters. You have a couple of you try problems so I've moved on to example two but go ahead and pause the video work on the now you tries and then turn the video back on when you're ready for the next example. What we're going to be doing is using the theorems that we were just talking about to try to solve a problem. What we have here is a parallelogram and its name is WXYZ. We want to find YZ, which is that bottom segment. Now, we see that we have an expression for the bottom segment and its opposite segment, XW or WX, and what we can do then is set those equal to each other. So that's what we're going to do because we know that those are congruent and that means that the lengths are equal to each other. So we're going to plug in the expressions solve for a and then once we have a we can plug it back in to find the length of yz. That gives us 52. Now we're on the same parallelogram. This time what we're trying to find is the measurement of angle z. So we notice that angle Z is, we have an expression for it, 9B plus 2, and we see that we have the measurement for a consecutive angle, angle W. We know that consecutive angles in a parallelogram are going to be supplementary, meaning we can set them up in an equation to add them to each other and then equal 180 degrees. And that's going to allow us to solve for B. Once we solve for B, we're going to plug it back into the expression for angle Z, and that's going to give us 65 degrees. So I know you've got to go through the math. Pause the video so that you can plug everything in and copy it down into your notes so that you'll be ready for the now you try in your notes. Quick reminder, when you're drawing any kind of parallelogram or a triangle or whatever, remember that you name the, the polygon in order of going around the polygon. So you can't zigzag across the polygon to give it a name. So ABCD means that you have the order of the vertices. Now on example three, what we're gonna do first of all is graph three points, J, K, and L. What we want to do is to find the coordinates of the missing point or missing vertex of the parallelogram, M. So first things first, let's graph. Once we've got those, what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope. And if we find the slope between points K and L, we know to get from K to L, you have to go up 4 and you have to go to the right 4. We also know based on the name of this parallelogram, J, K, L, M, that M has to be to the right and a little bit up compared to J. And when we think about exactly where it's going to be, it's going to be from J, we're going to go up 4 and over 4. So just like we did from K to L, we're going to mirror that, 
going from J to the missing point M. That's going to allow us to locate point M and of course once we figure out where it needs to be we can come up with the coordinates and we can draw our parallelogram. You've got another example like this one in your notes to be able to work on and now you try so go ahead and work on that one right now. Pause the video so you can work on it and turn it back on when you're done. To skip example four so make sure that you cross out the one in your notes, both the example, the now you try proof, uh, I'm sorry, there's an A and a B. Cross both of those out and then in your independent practice for 6.2, you can also cross out the proof in the homework assignment. And that does it for 6.2. I will see you back for section 6.3 when we're going to continue talking about parallelograms, this time with some converse theorems. See you then.